Hello, my lovelies. Um, wow, am I paying for yesterday? Uh, yeah, my body is. Ah, uh, what have you done to me? Which I know a lot of you editors, editors will understand. You editors, <laughs> bless you. Um. Okay, so I posted yesterday, and it dawned on me that I have not mentioned Tony's cancer yet, so I apologise for that, and I thought I would just bring you guys up to date. Um, so, we renewed our wedding vows in June, been married for 10 years. Boop, boop. Um, we had the most beautifully, wonderful, glorious day. Um, since January, Tony's been going to the doctors because he's, he's not been right. He's been peeing all the time. Uh, well, not all the time, but, you know, frequently. And it's been getting more and more and more painful. And he was put on all of this different medication and nothing was working. And he was eventually sent for a bladder emptying test in June. And you're going to have to excuse me if I have a little cry because I, uh, have really not let myself cry about what we've been through this year. Um, not because I've not wanted to, because God, I've really wanted to at times. Uh, but I think sometimes when you start, and I can feel myself going, this is so weird. I think sometimes when you start, it's, uh, difficult to stop. And so when you're in the thick of it, you can't stop. And we're sort of coming out of the thick of it, I hope, now. Um, so random leaking may occur, and I apologise for that. I, I don't actually sod it. My husband's had cancer. I'm not going to apologise for crying. Sorry. Ah, sorry. Ah, mm, such an idiot. I'm, I've been told that I'm a massive over-apologiser, so I'm working on that. So, Tony went for this bladder emptying test. They scan you, you pee, they look in your pee, they scan you again. And the lady said that, this is back in June, normally um, they don't, disclose results there and then um but she could see a significant number of abnormalities within his bladder and um normally if there's blood in the urine it really shows up in the lab but there was enough quite a substantial amount that she could see it very clearly and um after he peed there was a Again, she kept using the word significant amount of urine left within the bladder. She said that she was going to ring the GP who would be in touch over the next couple of days. And within half an hour of Tony being at home, the GP was on the phone um, and referred him to our local hospital where we had to go for some tests. And in the morning, I remember sort of we were sat there and in the morning, it really sounded like it was going to be stones. And he was explaining how they treat stones and what they do for them and everything like that. And they very kindly let me go in. They had to put, I'm just going to talk really frankly about the medical side of this, because um, even though, you know, yeah, it is embarrassing, but it, if it can help maybe prepare somebody else, then, you know. So um, they put a camera inside the penis to access the bladder to have a look. And they very kindly let me in to that test with uh, him. And uh, I remember like when it came up on screen and you could see these great big round like uh, lumps in the bladder. And there were also two nurses in the room. And I was holding Tony's hand and one of the nurses came over and put her arm around me. And nobody was saying anything. And just as he was taking, there were six large lumps. And just as he was taking the camera out, I said to him, is this cancer? And he said, yes. Um, and our world cracked a little bit. If I'm honest, that was very hard. Because we then didn't know for a long time whether it had spread or whether it had... how aggressive it was or what stage it was or anything like that. 
um, he went in for surgery in August and we were under the impression that they were going to remove as many tumours as they could. We didn't find out until September that actually they'd only removed half of one tumour and they were going to refer him to a hospital about an hour away because he needed to have the entire bladder taken out. Um, and he now had eight tumours. So between August, uh, sorry, between June and August, he had grown two further tumours. Um, with removing the bladder, they'd also remove part of the bowel to build a new bladder, which he would then have to drain with a catheter because there'd be no nerve endings inside and he wouldn't ever get the sensation to pee. Um, as you can imagine, it has been hell, all the not knowing. Um, as all health crises seem to, it has brought Tony and I closer together. Every time I think we can't sort of get closer together, um, we prove ourselves wrong, which is nice. Um, so we went to Bournemouth in September, at the end of very end of September, I believe, to have a chat with this consultant about the bladder removal it's called a total cystectomy um and again in their incompetence this hospital they told us that they were going to remove as many tumors as they could and um you know didn't tell us decided not to tell us for <laughs> over a month that actually they'd only taken half of one um at, when they did the first surgery they did inject the tumors with chemotherapy to their credit i must give them that um to try to slow the growth because it was um quite aggressive um but non-invasive which we didn't find out until october that it was non-invasive so from june to october we didn't know that it, whether it spread or not which was awful um although we did know it was stage two which was good so in their incompetence they hadn't sent over any test results blood results nothing and this guy, the consultant sort of said, you know, you're so much younger than my normal patients. And there are very real lifelong implications of having a radical cystectomy. And I want to do everything that I can to save your bladder. And before I see the tests and everything, I'm certainly not going to do a, a radical cystectomy. Um, so Tone was booked in for surgery. Uh, we weren't actually 100% sure until the day of the surgery what they were going to do whether they were going to remove tumors or whether they were going to go in and have a look and decide to do the radical cystectomy which we would then have to schedule again um and that's sort of when it all changed really this the consultant that we saw was absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and in an hour and a half he removed all eight tumors which is incredible and from there we sorry from there we found out that it it was not invasive it hadn't spread anywhere else um we've not been told that he's in remission yet because they they need to go back in in january um he's got to go into hospital overnight again and they're going to have another look to see if there's any regrowth so we're not 100% out of the woods yet but I think we both really feel like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, which sorry, there's pig giving the giving the comfort. Um there's light at the end of the tunnel, which is incredible. So my lovelies, that's why I disappeared. That's what we've been going through. I recorded films all the way throughout the process, but they are personal, they're for Tony and I. Um maybe one day I'll share them, I really don't know. I feel like I needed to record it because of my problems with memory loss. Um, but I vanished and that's why I vanished. Um, but I never want to let you guys down. And I know that none of you now that you know will feel like you've been let down. Um, but I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go because my arms really hurt in holding the camera up. But love and blessings to you all. And I will see you soon. God bless.